You're listening to Nightlight. Hello and a warm welcome once again to the Nightlight podcast. My guest on today's show is Mark McMillian, speaking to us from Austin, Texas. And I'm going to be talking about the final episode in his long-running video series on the Book of Daniel. End time news and views. Nice to talk with you again, Mark. Gosh, since you were last on the show, so much bad news is continuing to happen, especially there in the USA. <laughs> You've heard the story about the guy, he was famous for his swearing, and then one time his apple cart overturned, and he just stood there, and people said, aren't you going to say anything? And the guy said, I I, I just can't do the subject justice. <laughs> <laughs> right. He, 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 was, he was so overwhelmed by, that he didn't know what to say. So there's just one thing after the other. You know, it's just a lot of stuff going on. There sure is, and things keep going from bad to worse to the point I can hardly even stand to watch the news anymore. Have you seen there in the USA, Mark, any signs of the Lord interceding with his judgments to try to get people's attention, to warn them that he's not at all happy with what is happening there? Well, that's, you know, it's it's just like even in the worst times in the Bible in the past, and even it says it's going to be the same in the future, all those things can be happening and still people don't listen, people don't get it. There's examples of that all over the Bible where horrific things were happening and people just didn't get it. They didn't hear the voice of God and they didn't sense things. But then a few did. And I'll tell you an example. In, in the last couple of weeks, in the last two or three weeks, I've had meetings with three, not meetings, but just happenstance meetings with three different people, all of whom are around my age, pretty successful people, almost wealthy. In each of those conversations, for the first time, the first time I met them, they were pulling on me about the end wow. time. We didn't, I mean, they found out that I did this series about Daniel and things like that. And this one woman, I mean, she's a banker. And so just almost out of nowhere, she says, well, I'm a mid-trib pre-wrath. <laughs> I just almost laughed out loud because that's a very advanced, nuanced understanding of the end time. She says she's mid-trib. So she believes the coming of the Lord is not pre-trib or post-trib, but it's in the middle of the tribulation. And then she says she's pre-wrath, which is another f- phrase that that eschatology people use. And this, she's just a she's just a you know a woman in society. She knows a lot about this stuff. And and two other people. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that there are people around who are really studying these things and are really looking to the Lord. And it is being talked about more. Very interesting and very encouraging to know that many people are hungry to know the truth of what's going on, especially in relation to the sure word of Bible prophecy. I think what's thrown me, Mark, well, not thrown me because I have total faith and trust that Bible prophecy will be exactly fulfilled. There will be an Antichrist. He will rule for seven years. There'll be a mark of the beast that he'll try to enforce on the world after three and a half years. The Antichrist will fight major wars against powerful nations that will oppose him. But right now, as seemingly all-powerful entities make an all-out push for total world control, I'm finding it hard to see how we are going to get from where we are now to the fulfillment of the prophecies that you've been teaching in your Daniel videos. I think a lot of people feel exactly the same way you do, and I feel that. Also, it's like, where are we? And this is like for me, I guess because because I teach these things and because I believe that this is part of a continuity, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Prophecy, God has been using prophecy and fulfilling prophecy since the beginning. So we have a we have this sure word of prophecy. And it's, you know, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Jesus said, if these should hold their peace, the stones would cry out. So this, that's something that's very important for me. And I, I feel the same way as you. I, I look for these things. And this is why I'm kind of, I don't even know what the right word is. Um, I don't want to be dissuaded from a very steadfast looking to the fundamentals of the end time fulfillment. I mean, like you mentioned, the Antichrist. Uh, I believe that there has to be some kind of temple because Paul talked about that and, you know, the, the man of sin sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I don't believe that's uh, going to be fulfilled spiritually. I don't believe this is some type of, we can spiritualize that because that's not the way Paul was talking. And Paul was talking, referring back to the book of Daniel. 
where this, these things are fulfilled physically. So a temple, sacrifices, the Antichrist. I'm kind of like, it's like I think we talked about in the last show where I wrote this article called Don't Shoot Till You See the Whites of Their Eyes. And it's a phrase from like 250 years ago when the Americans were fighting the British. <laughs> And the, the commander told them, don't fire your rifles until you can almost see these guys. Not, not just don't start shooting when they're 100, 100 meters away or something like that or 200. And that's the way I feel about with these things. I want to wait until I know for sure and then that's it. And anything else that distracts me or is a, a distraction and not the real deal, I want to be cautious about that. Nightlight, keeping you in tune with the times. But before we move on to Daniel 12, I just wanted to say that it recently came to me that maybe because the devil knows Bible prophecy very well, including his own demise, maybe he's trying to get a jump on God and become the ruler of this world ahead of schedule, so to speak, and in a different way than is prophesied in the word of God. It's, you know what it's like? It's very much like what Jesus said. I mean, I'm not saying that this is the literal final fulfillment of it, but it's very much like where Jesus said, I think it was in Matthew 24, you know, if, it, if they shall say he's in the desert or he, you know, go not forth. And it's like that. It's almost like it's uh, decoys, I guess this is the word. Yes. The enemy has all these decoys and diversions and distractions right now. Yes. And it seems like a lot of people, a lot of Christians, even people that you and I know, are sort of going after some of the decoys and the distractions and all. Yes. But sometimes it can be a learning experience where you find out, well, that was, I just got tripped off on that. I guess this ties into what we were talking about and all. Before, you know, doing the call with you today, I was thinking, well, what should I say? And I mean, it's what, but I was thinking, I guess the whole thing is what you and I have and our friends have is something very precious. It's not just Christianity, it's discipleship. We have lived a life of Christian discipleship. It's one thing to be a Christian. It's another thing to be a disciple and to be a missionary, to know how to win souls. Yes. I mean, that's been part of our lives. But most Christians, I mean, very few Christians know how to win souls or live by faith or really stand up for the Lord to feed his sheep. That's what somewhat breaks my heart in these times because to me, when I look at Bible prophecy and I see like these things in Daniel 11, they... They that understand among the people shall instruct many. Uh, they should be strong and do exploits. And then I look at the Christianity of today. It's disheartening in some ways because so many Christians are, they're either too political or they're kind of lukewarm or they're just sort of baby Christians. That's sad. And those things, it's like, it's going to have to be the Lord. But I think what you're doing, what I'm doing, what many of us are doing, we're just fighting night and day to try to strengthen the, the brethren. This is what Jesus said to Peter, Peter, when you're converted, strengthen your brethren. And that's such a job that needs to be done in these times. The light is always on with Nightlight. Okay, Mark, would you like to go ahead and talk about your latest Daniel video? Anything you'd like to share about it, especially in relation to the times we're now living? Yeah. I was so impressed by going back into the Word again and seeing how that I knew that Jesus quoted from this passage once, but it turns out actually I didn't realize Jesus quoted from this passage twice. When, in Matthew 24, when Jesus said, When you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. So the best place that you can find that reference is, is Daniel 11:31. But then you go to Matthew 24, 21, Jesus said, then there will be great tribulation, such as was not since the foundation, since the beginning of the world. So he linked those two, and that verse is Daniel 12, 1. So that's how important these things are, that Jesus Christ twice directly quoted extensively from this passage, Daniel 11 and Daniel 12. And just to mention again, Daniel 10 through 12 was sort of like one session. They broke it up into three chapters, but it was one experience. That's right. So it's super important. It's like, this is another, it just grieves me. I mean, I, I see these people. Let's talk about the 144,000. Who was the 144? I think, you know, and all this kind of like, I don't know, just sort of, but they don't really have the foundation of the, and the importance of these things. So just like I put in the videos, I, tr I 
you know, it's almost better for people if they really want to get into this to actually look at the videos. Maybe the maybe the most the most comprehensive video is the one I did on Daniel nine twenty seven, you know, six years ago, because that puts the whole thing together of the the last week, the last seven years, the midst of the week, the middle of the seven, three and a half years, where and then the Bible talks about forty two months, twelve hundred and sixty days. So these are fundamental things, and more and more people are getting to know it. I mean, to me, this fixes our eyes on Scripture. It fixes our eyes on the fundamentals of what Bible prophecy has said will happen. And that strengthens us against all these decoys and distractions and diversions, because that's, I think, a major thing that the enemy is throwing at us right now. That's what I think. Lighting your path through the end times. You're with Nightlight. I I had a lot of fun doing Daniel 12 because... I appreciate that chapter much more now than I ever did before. I guess I was really focused on Daniel 9 and Daniel 11 and the importance of those chapters. But in doing this Daniel 12 video, for one, it's only it's only 13 verses, <laughs> which is I think is the shortest chapter in Daniel by far. But every one of those verses is just drenched with significance. And that, it, it's a 13 verses and it's a 53-minute video. It's just the longest video on the shortest chapter. But there's just so much in it. You know, there's just the last few verses. It's, you know how in some movies, you you know, I mean, the famous one is, you know, the, the, in Terminator, you know, I'll be back. That, and, the, and then the beginning of the next movie is, I'm back. <laughs> and it's like at the very end of the book of Daniel, the very end of chapter 12, the Lord throws in this sort of funny thing about this extra 75 days right we already had all these things about three and a half years 42 months 1260 days but at the very end of the chapter it's talking about 1335 days which is an extra 75 days because it's from the point it's you know from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away it says blessed is he that comes to the 1335 days yes so you go what what is that and why did he put that right at the end of the chapter into the book and all but then that's what I did in that video. I, I just went back and tried to look because there's a whole thing about the end. And, and again, people who don't know very much about this stuff, it's like the end of the world. The end. Of, and, and that strikes fear and terror into everybody's heart. And it's like, like I said in the video, it's like the planet splitting in half and everybody dies. But if you look at scripture, that's not really exactly the picture. We're not talking about the end of the planet here. We're talking about a huge indescribable transition from the kingdoms of this world becoming the kingdoms of our Lord. That's what the Bible says. It's going to be Jesus coming back with the saints to take over the earth for the millennium. Yes. But there's a lot of information. And so I, I, I sort of titled this video, The End and Beyond. So it's not really quite the end because there's something that comes after the end. And I sort of talked about the the wrath of God, because all these things confuse people. You have people saying, God is not a wife beater. God wouldn't let us go through the tribulation like that. We're going to be rescued because God loves us. And that sounds so appealing. Right. I know God's not a wife beater, but he does allow and has allowed his people to suffer tribulation and persecution, but not wrath. So this is the difference. There's a difference between the great tribulation and the wrath of God. And what you and I believe is we're going to go through the tribulation, but not the wrath. And that's one of the things I bring out of that Daniel 12 video. And listeners, you can easily find this video on YouTube, like I did by searching for Daniel 12, Mark McMillian, and it'll come right up. By the way, Mark, what is that mysterious 70 days at the end of Daniel 12? Well, I I try to bring out in the video, because I just try to be really cautious about speculation. Somebody taught me one time that when you're teaching this kind of stuff, you really need to make a clear difference in your teaching between your speculation and things that you can be pretty doggone sure about, because people need to know the difference. Some of it, if it's speculation, okay, this is what I think, and this is how it looks to me. It's not the same thing as because so many teachers like this is it. You know, right. so my speculation, my understanding from everything that I put in that Daniel 12 video is that quite possibly 
that 75 day period, Jesus said immediately after the tribulation that he was going to come. So what happens next? What happens after that? What happens? In the Revelation 16 and other places, it talks about the wrath of God being poured out. My guess is that that 75 days is likely a measure of the length of time before the end of the wrath of God and the entering first days of the millennium. Yes, that makes a lot of sense, Mark. I agree. Wow. I mean, I'm just looking at the first verse in Daniel 12. It says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. It's so good to know that as Christians, we have the archangel Michael and a multitude of other angels fighting for us. They're on our side. And it says, And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. So definitely, Mark, things are not going back to normal. Things are going to escalate from bad to worse. But at least during the tribulation period, it is God who's raining the judgments down on the earth and tribulating the wicked, not like it is now when the world's suffering and tribulations are being caused by Satan and his evil people. Yeah, these are the, these are the times we're living in because there's all of these things going on in the States where so many Christians are becoming militants, becoming uh, political, almost like the zealots of Jesus' time. One of Jesus' disciples was Simon Zelotes. So he was, you know, that was, seemed to indicate that he, he came from that background of being political, sort of an ultra-nationalist, Jewish nationalist of those times. Mm -hmm. But the early church, the early church, uh, Book of Acts, there's, of course, politics. There wasn't politics back then to where they are now. I mean, a little bit, but it's totally, totally different. But the early church, they just were so focused on Jesus and on winning souls and where the Lord was just really doing something totally different. Right. But meanwhile, in, in Israel, it just got worse and worse until finally the Romans came in 40 years after after the crucifixion of Jesus and killed about one million Jews. And, and these were people who got more and more politically, nationalistically zealous. And it kind of worries me or bothers me or concerns me that many, many Christians here in the States, some of which you and I know some of these folks, who, I hate to say it, they used to be on the mission field, and now they are virtual insurrectionists and militants and gun freaks. To me, at least, that's not how we're going to be fighters in the end time. We're not going to be insurrectionists and political nationalists, but we're going to be soul winners and disciple. That's right. There's a lot of different things going on that are inroads into Christianity that are not positive, that are worrisome. That's, that's what it seems to me. Amen. And of course, Mark, the Lord is going to give us awesome spiritual weapons. I'm thinking right now of the two sackcloth witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. In verse 5 and 6, it says, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Wow. But these are, of course, totally supernatural weapons, nothing of themselves, but just the awesome power of God's Spirit working through them. Yes. Yes. 100%. 100%. Thank you for quoting. That's, that's the point. I mean, that's what I totally believe. We're not going to be a political movement in the sense that it is now. We're not going to be, you know, taking up arms against the Antichrist and having, you know, little militias. That's not, I don't think so. <laughs> That's not our power. I, I shouldn't be. It's not going to be in weapons. We're not going to use guns against that. That doesn't work like that. So this is just another distraction, diversion, decoy that people are, to me, I feel people are falling for that and they're forgetting they're, that we're part of something bigger. We're not, that's not our calling. Our calling is discipleship and winning souls and feeding the sheep. Shining bright in the dark night, you're listening to Nightlight. Right now, every night, I'm reading Winston Churchill's book, The Gathering Storm. I mean, it's just so powerful. I mean, I, I don't know, maybe I've spoken in the last show, but I read Churchill 
every night, and I've been reading him for months because the guy is, he's an incredible guy, you know, it's like his vision, his ability, his knowledge, he's just like, he almost, I mean, there's some sense which he almost single-handedly <laughs> saved Great Britain nearly, I mean, but the thing was, he was in opposition. Nobody wanted to listen to him. He was not in government at that time because he was, say, he was saying, you know, this guy Hitler is coming. The Nazis are doing this. We need to get ready. And everybody else, no, no, it's not like that. We need to have peace in our time. Everything's okay. We're, the nation's not ready for this. And you shouldn't be so alarmist, Winston. <laughs> and, and to me, it's a parallel of how it is now that so many Christians are like how Great Britain and much of Europe was. They wanted peace and they, they weren't really ready and maybe it's not as bad as it looks and, and it just got worse and worse and worse. And you know, I mean, you're, you're British, you know, I mean, they just barely, barely survived the onslaught of the Nazis. You know, I mean, there was this, you know all this, it came down to the British Air Force taken on the German Air Force over Great Britain. And so then Churchill said something like, never have so many owed so much to so few. Right. Because they were shooting out, shooting out those German planes or the nation would have been destroyed. That's, why, that's not what Churchill did. And that's why he's such a, uh, to me, like a sample or an inspiration because he had the vision. He recognized the enemy. He saw what was coming. And he never budged from that. And he kept telling, and people were not, he was almost like a prophet. I mean, he, I mean, he wasn't a prophet, but he was almost like a prophet. And he just kept telling people, this is happening. And he had facts. Right. He had facts. I mean, this is this is why for me, facts are important. I'm, I'm a truth person. I believe in facts. I believe in reality. And it's important not to get faked out, you know, by something that's false. So Churchill, he over and over again, he had the facts. He got the facts. And then he kept sharing the facts with people in power. And then finally, at last, he ended up being the prime minister, which was a sort of surprised everybody because a lot of people didn't even like him. It's just that he had been right the whole time and he, he was ready to, to galvanize the nation. That's the kind of thing that, to me, Christians need to be galvanized for the Lord. They need to put the Lord first, not their materialism, not their nationalism, not their politics. But they need to just come down and realize it's the Lord. We have to stand together as Christians more than anything else. But that's that's not really happening quite yet. But I, maybe it's coming. Mark, are there any Christian leaders in the U.S. who you can see the Lord is raising up to lead and to encourage and to inspire and to lead the spiritual fight? Well, I, I wish I could say yes, but I, I personally don't know of anybody because Nearly every single Christian leader of any stature uh, gets pulled into the secular political maelstrom, the tumult that's going on here right now. You know, they're going to be standing up for, for this side or that side, and, and uh, they're just so like tools within a political fight. For me, I don't think that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Nightlight. You're listening to an international edition of Nightlight. Shining God's love light to the world. Mark, now that you've finished the Daniel series, are you considering teaching on the book of Revelation? In particular, I'd request you teach on Revelation chapter 17 and 18. We, we can do something like that. It's a radio show I can more or less do impromptu, like we're doing here, spontaneous. When I do a video, I just feel like it's almost like putting out doctrine, and you've got tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people seeing these things, and... and and looking at it very closely to what I say, you know, the whole subject of doing the book of Revelation, I certainly have thought about that. Uh, I, I have 14 videos still to do in foreign languages, a lot in, in Portuguese, Arabic, Hindi, and Chinese. Most of them are in those languages. So I've got a lot of work still to do there. But I, I certainly realize that the book of Revelation, it's a really big project. And there's so much controversy in that book and there's just some things just like just like I put in Daniel 12 some things we just have to admit we don't totally understand it there's a lot of things in revelation you just have to say we don't really know at this time a lot of people they don't want to hear something like that but then like I mean in revelation 17 and 18 and doing a show on that we we could do that sometime mark before we sign out please give us the details of your youtube channel and your blog and if there's anything else you'd like to share yeah well this is great I 
so much enjoyed doing this with you. And there's a lot of different people with different views right now. It's like it's not like everybody agrees on everything, you know. I mean, some of the people have, you have on your show, they might not agree with everything that I say, and I might not agree with everything they say. But there's there's just a lot of different views right now. But we can still stay together as Christians and as disciples. That's that's our calling. To me, that's it's really on my heart a whole lot that we stay together and hold on to our crowns of discipleship. I have two websites. One of them is called prophesiesofdaniel.com. One, you know, one word, prophesiesofdaniel.com. That site is actually in 15 languages. If you look at the little flags up at the top, and if you're Russian or you're Indonesian or you're Arabic, you click on your that flag up there, and it'll take you to the, the website in your language. I also have a site, a separate site. It's just markmcmillian.com. And uh, there's more blog articles, somewhat of a more personal side in, in that one. I'm so glad that we could talk again and, and sort of share notes and compare notes and, and strengthen each other in these times because that's what people need. They need strengthening. They need to hear the, uh, uh, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? And that's what people need now. They need the sure sound of the trumpet, of the trumpet of the Lord and not some of these distractions that are going on. Thank you for having me on your show again. I'm, I'm so happy to be doing this. God bless you. And thanks so much to Mark McMillian. Hope this show was a blessing to you. And I'll be back very soon with another guest and another topic on the next Nightlight Podcast. God bless you. Bye for now.